in the first part of this video, I would like to share some facts about Vipassana and then explain a little bit about what it actually is. And then in the second part, I will talk about my own experience and some thoughts about it. And I've been now five weeks uh, out of the retreat and meditating twice a day. So I will share a bit how it was for me and how it's going. But first, let's start with uh, what is it actually, Vipassana? Because for many people, uh, it's a new term. And uh, even before I went to uh, practice and into the retreat, I didn't really know what was going on. And I guess it's like that with these kind of things that we can't really know before we do it. But we can know a little bit more. So let's start with that. Uh, Vipassana. It means uh, introspection in a way. And it's a meditation technique that was discovered uh, or taught, discovered and taught by the Buddha about uh, 2,500 years ago after his uh, enlightenment, his liberation from pain and suffering, a craving and aversion of what is. He wanted to share this uh, joy and harmony and peace that he discovered and to do so he taught people how maybe they can also reach this place and that's uh, vipassana is the name of this technique that is mostly about observing introspection that's where the name comes from so in a similar way to uh, going to a place where you can learn an instrument or a skill or something like this. Um, you can learn also a meditation technique and you can learn to observe your yourself, your insight, your being, the reality in the framework of your body. And this you can do in a Vipassana retreat. And it's mostly about creating circumstances where this can happen in an effective way. And that's what they do in these places. They are kind of all over the world, the Vipassana meditation centers. And you can go on the website and sign up. And here's a fun fact about it. It's for free. You don't pay for this 10-day uh, course where you have everything, a place to stay and the nice comfortable bed and blankets and the uh, hot shower and uh, all the food and the teachings and you don't pay. How about that? Um, you will be asked for a donation in the end, but in a very soft way. Basically, it's like if you want to donate over there is uh, somebody who will take the, your donations, but you don't have to. And uh, the thing is, every place that is offered for students has already been paid for by a former student who was so grateful for being uh, taught this technique that they wanted to share it with uh, or give other people the opportunity to experience the same. So people pay afterwards uh, happily for another spot for somebody else. And so it's free. That's uh, something great about this and uh, it's also very undogmatic like you don't need to believe in anything it's really about learning to close your eyes shut your mouth and start observing what's actually going on inside it's kind of like if i say now okay feel into your foot what how is your foot feeling yeah if you had told this to me some years ago, I would have been like, what? Feel into my foot. And then some months ago, I would have been like, uh, okay, I'm trying. And now uh, after some weeks of, uh, oh, that's what I, what I learned there, to really begin to be uh, sensitive, to observe sensations on the body. So this you, you learn. And it's very beneficial to learn this. And I mean, I'm not making this video to convince anybody uh, to do 
uh, this kind of training. It's, it will come naturally on your path if it's what, uh, what's uh, good for you, let's say. But uh, also, the more you get in contact with it, and if there's some curiosity, maybe me sharing a bit about my experience will uh, be the little push. I mean, for sure, on my path, I listened to people speak about Vipassana and got more and more curious until finally I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to do a Vipassana retreat and see what it's like. Yes, so some more about the facts. Um, since it's about introspection, looking inside, you don't want to be distracted. The, the idea is to create an environment where there's as little distraction as possible. So no phone, no talking, silence, 10 days of silence. Actually, it's nine days because on the 10th day, it's already kind of a transition day back to culture, normal society. So you, uh, the silence is broken on that day. Um, but yeah, it's mostly silent. No eye contact. You don't look into people's eyes. You dress in a way that's not distracting too much. Maybe even no jewelry. In the beginning, first time, you're, you're allowed to have some jewelry. But uh, also, this will be taken away if you go again. Um, food is very simple and it's enough, but it's also not a lot if you're used to eating all the time. And uh, then this will be... Uh, also a little bit of a challenge maybe or uh, yeah uh, no books no reading uh, no no taking notes no journaling um, no sex masturbation so basically you enter into the life of a nun or a monk you enter a monastery for for 10 days and uh, you get taught this technique. That's the, that's the deal, that's what you're signing up to, that's what you say yes to. It's very clear that um, there's no exceptions or excuses. So uh, also, of course, I didn't say this yet, but like no smoking, no alcohol, and these kind of things. Um, so yeah, you, that's what you say yes to when you come there, and then there's no... Um, uh, no exceptions or so. And also you say yes to coming to the classes. Not all of them, like basically the, the schedule is you wake up at four o'clock. It's the first gong, 4.30, meditation hall, sit down on your uh, pillow and then you're there with yourself and you get to observe. I mean, it's really also opportunity. Yeah, when do you have this to have so much time in silence, to, without distractions, no, no obligation, everything is uh, taken care of. People are cooking your food and uh, holding space for you and you just have time to be with yourself and observe reality as it is. That's amazing also. And it's uh, challenging. Mm. Yeah, so this is, oh yeah, and then um, you don't have to be present all the time. There are certain um, blocks where you have to be there. It's part of the agreement that you, you're there for the teaching. Yeah, when uh, you listen to the new information, when the technique is taught, then everybody has to be there. But then also there are times where it's said uh, you can choose if you want to meditate in the meditation hall or in your own room. And then nobody's coming to check if you're actually falling asleep. So it's uh, self-responsibility also. I mean, you don't come there to cheat and be on your phone and sleeping all the time. Yeah, if that's what you want to do, then you don't need to go to a remote area and um, commit to this kind of uh, monk monkey lifestyle so that's the the invitation the offer you you taught this technique the 10 days are enough i think that's the idea enough to 
in your practice bring you to a point where once at least you reach that point of ah and now i understand because that's what it's about on the experiential level yeah not to have a intellectual uh, moment of uh, oh yeah okay that makes sense uh, so mm -hmm, time doesn't exist okay oh yeah that's that makes sense yeah, it's a very different thing to have a uh, an insight on that mental intellectual level or to have it on an experiential level within the framework of your own body as they would say so it's about that i think that the 10 days are enough for most of the people to come to that point where they have the experience uh, of okay now i get it and and then yeah what what follows then and this is maybe then now the second part of this because for me uh, i left as a vipassana and the, at the end of it the invitation or the, the guideline let's say is to uh, keep meditating in the morning and in the evening for an hour that would be like the agreement or yeah, if you once really give it a chance, give this technique a chance and you have uh, resonance, you, you like it, you want to keep practicing, then this is uh, what, um, what the recommendation is. And when I left, I didn't have a clear um, decision to, or commitment to keep going. Also, like to be really honest and personal, like I used to smoke and enjoy it and i was also not uh i didn't like I, I didn't mind drinking alcohol didn't drink like super super much but yeah i liked it also and um there are other distractions in life that i would enjoy i mean i made already a video about um your brain on porn, pornography. And uh, this is some, I made that video a year ago and like it hasn't been such a time waster for myself. Uh, but also this, like um, there are uh, many things that uh, where new awareness kicks in or that like for sure in those 10 days, it's like gone, not, it's out of the question. And then leaving the retreat, it's really to check in again. Uh, what do I do now? There's a new kind of consciousness behind every decision. And I think this is a very personal experience also. Like it really depends on where somebody is on their own path. Because um, for me, the people who watch more of my videos say I already shared about working with ayahuasca a little bit. Uh, that's like basically a year ago. And I think that I, I would be so curious to do it again, work more with ayahuasca now that I've learned this meditation technique or this technique of observing my own, the body, the sensations on the body and entering into the space or staying in this observer mode with such a strong uh, commitment also because uh, it feels like this was, would add a lot to my to the ayahuasca experience and then on the other hand having that experience in my system also like the ayahuasca experience already in my system also uh, gives me a different way of being in the meditation retreat so yeah this can't you can't really look at only one of these things it's very individual i would guess and um, depends on what where you are on your own path and for me now uh, this uh, retreat it's like five yeah today five weeks that i left and afterwards i was really um, with the question okay what do i do now should i continue meditating every day do i really want that do i have a strong commitment um, do I want to smoke? I didn't really come there to quit smoking. And now I'm like, what do I do? So I think in the beginning, the first day, I was really like, okay, today I'm going to 
meditate just to give myself some more time to make that decision if I want to keep the practice going and then it was like that the next day and the next day and now it's um, five weeks later and still I um, I'm meditating twice a day by now I can say at least twice a day like right after getting up and at some point in the afternoon or evening and if the day flows in that way I uh, I enjoy it going for another sitting and one sitting is one hour of uh, basically not moving at all and uh, observing the body and it's so fascinating um, and now this is like my, my experience uh, that uh, I want to share about also how amazing it is uh, to, and, I, and there I can I already kind of said it, uh, I don't know where it comes from really. If it, it, it must be a mix of all the different things that I've been doing in the last, uh, well, my life basically, but really in the last uh, years and months and so. But uh, keeping this practice going now is putting me in such a uh, light state of being throughout the day and then it's almost like I'm naturally high or something. I feel I'm, I'm so... <laughs> it's really funny and uh, not, I'm not able to put it into words. Like in a way I want to say it feels like uh, very airy and um, lots of awareness in the, in the body. Like I can really observe what's happening on my skin and inside and um, it's fascinating and yeah now I'm almost like checking is, is it good to speak about it like this because it might sound strange or like if if, uh, if you don't had, have not experienced this it might sound really weird what I how I speak now but um, I, I just wish that, uh, like coming out of the uh, retreat, I was thinking, oh wow, I have to tell everybody about this. Everybody should do this and learn this technique. And, and then the world will automatically, everything will fall into place. People will come into their uh, higher role and um, peace, love, unity. Harmony. That's uh, well, yeah. It's similar to and leaving the ayahuasca retreat and thinking everybody in the world, if everybody in the world had this kind of experience in their system, then the world would be such a different place. We would be like a, a beehive of uh, sharing and supporting and collaborating and all of this because we get in touch with a higher thing that we can observe when we don't distract ourselves with all these things then we can find it in within our body and that's just amazing and it's really uh, yeah I don't know maybe like I, I haven't uh, gone back to smoking and I didn't, uh, I changed a lot. I, I don't drink any alcohol. I think I'm mostly very happy and uh, in love also and um, anticipating amazing uh, future and I'm very grateful that I got to do this experience and I'm excited to what what comes now and to connect with people on this level and uh, co-create and uh, what else to say I'm almost uh, Yeah, I think that's all I can 
co maybe convey in a way that uh, it's really something to do if uh, you're in some way or another uh, looking for something to change in your life or something if like it, it needs to come at the right point also these kind of things if, uh, if you, you're enjoying everything is good the way uh, it is right now in your life then uh, yeah maybe there's no need for you to uh, take that uh, step but if you're uh, looking for a change or solution or peace or you're wondering like what's going out you uh, what's going on you out there also you're unhappy with the world uh, the big problems of the world and so um, then I think that um, I'm, I say vipassana. Uh, I was going to say meditation is really a path, but I, I think I never understood, or like that's not. I don't want to say it like this. I understand meditation on a different level now, having gone through that intense time. That totally wasn't easy. It was challenging on many levels, and so and so and so. But I'm super grateful and happy that I uh, went through those 10 days and I'm actually looking to go again at some point in the near future. Well, not. Well, thing is, it's, you need some time to plan this uh, kind of retreat because uh, the places are, uh, there's not an abundance of places to go. So um, if you want to do a retreat for sure like it's not I sign up just like that if the time is right things will fall into place I'm very convinced of that also but it's uh, go take a look at the website and you will see from uh, the uh, registration opens 90 days before the retreat starts and usually also on that day all the seats are taken so if you want to sign up maybe you go take a look and uh, with uh, at least 90 days uh, time ahead you uh, set a uh, alarm for that day when you need to sign up and then your system your inner can also uh, start preparing for this uh, life changing experience probably yes I recommend doing it and uh, maybe I will uh, make another update after some more weeks and see how it goes and I'm still not in a place where I say I have a strong commitment for a certain time frame of doing this and that or maybe yeah, maybe I think tomorrow I want to do something else and maybe I want to get drunk and smoke a lot of cigarettes and maybe I want to like indulge in whatever way and then that's also fine like uh, so i'm curious how this journey will go on with the meditation myself um, and maybe i will make an update about it at some point and as usual i'm happy to ask question, uh, answer questions if there are questions and um, i think that's all i have to say on the vipassana today uh, thank you for your attention. I appreciate it. And uh, leave a comment if you enjoy my videos, my video. And uh, so long. Aniche. 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 Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. <laughs>